Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to fit your SRAM Force dual pivot rim brake calipers to your bike. So let's go ahead, let's run through the steps. Right, so here we have a SRAM Force dual pivot caliper, as you can see. So you've got your mounting nut on the back, that's a 5mm hex head. The longer one, like this, the longer thread is for the front brake. The shorter one, the stubbier one, so the rear brake. So that's your 5mm on there. Then you've got so your brake pads to adjust those. That's a 4mm hex head for those to adjust them, the height up and down. Then you've got your centering screw there, which is 3mm hex head for that and you've got your barrel adjuster there for your cable you've got your pinch bolt for your cable there again 5mm hex head your cable goes in between pinches up and you've got your lever there to let to undo the brakes so you can drop your wheel out with the tyre on like that and because these are dual pivot type caliper. If you look at the brake pads, as as they come in, they don't contact in the same place, even though they're set at the same place on the arm at the moment, which is the lowest position. As they wear in, they're set, they don't touch the rim in the same place. So as the brake pads are wearing, one moves up and the other one moves down the rim as they wear the pads so you just set them different different spot on the rim so it's allowing for them to wear like that so that's the actual caliper so the centering screw just comes through there and pushes on the inside under there what you can't see that's just a final adjustment on it and then you've got a square on that nut there, you see that or not? That's a 13 millimeter spanner, so you can hold that nut to initially put the caliper on, and then do up your five mil here. That just holds it in place, so you can center it left and right while you're doing that up. So let's go ahead. Let's get this fitted to the bike. Right. So the first thing to do is just put the caliper on like so and then we'll just put the uh, nut on the back through the fork and just get that started in place like so so it's just biting but it's not actually done up and then if you just did it up like that, obviously your brakes, one side be a big gap, the other side would be touching. So what you've got to do is just get the brakes centralised on there. Now what you want to make sure is you've put your, you've lowered or raised your caliper, your pad up or down. So is it actually going to make contact with the rim roughly how it should do? Doesn't matter if it's spot on for now, but it's actually going to make contact in roughly the right place. So you can see. All you've got to do to alter that is with your 4mm hex head, you can just slightly slacken off the nut and then just push the brakes together like so so you can see that the pad is actually making contact with the rim and like I said it's roughly in the right place then once you've got it held in position you can just nip the nut up again just like I say temporarily just so you make sure it's in the right place like that and then what we can do you're just using your spanner on there so like I said you can turn it left and right with that so 
we'll just set it there we'll hold it with the spanner and then we can just tighten up the 5mm behind just so it keeps it from moving then you just want to look make sure that they're roughly equal distance away from the rim each side so just have a look left and right because as you as you tighten it up you can just be holding the spanner like this and it just keeps it roughly right distance away so when you've got it mounted on there then what you can do is if you squeeze the brakes together you can see if one side is impacting the rim sooner than the other one obviously you don't want a, a big difference in them but you want to get it as close as you can so it allows later on you don't have to use as much centering adjustment you don't have to literally wind that screw too much you just want to make the minimal adjustment on that so you can see there they're both impacting the rim at about the same time roughly so what we'll do is we'll just leave it at that for now and then we'll get the cable put through the shifter and down through the pinch bolt so we've got the caliper roughly mounted in place for now now what we want to do is put the cable through the outer and the inner now when you depress the lever like so what you want to look at up inside there or we'll just zoom in a bit you can see the metal piece in here moves and you want to be able to see that countersunk hole like it is there if it's spun right round there's not a countersunk hole showing it's just a small hole in it so you'll need to see the countersunk side showing here for the cable to go through and then the stop to sit inside that hole so that's that and then with your outer cable like that just five mil out of cable what we're looking for is so you want to cut it to size so I'm going to make sure the ends open the ends you're going to use then what we we'll do is you put that up inside the lever so just goes in at the top there just slots in there like that now we just roughly run it around to make sure to get the length so you don't want to cut it too short you want to be able to make sure that you've got enough there and it's going to come and clean off the handlebars like that and do your tape where you're going to tape it at the last point and then it's going to go into there so you don't want it tight because when, when you wrap your bars there that'll pull down on the end of your bar tape so you want it up out of the way and then cut it to length so you can just hold it in it only just sits inside there it doesn't go right down inside that barrel adjuster it just literally sits there so with the barrel adjuster screwed right in all the way you can just mark it to length there and then you can snip with a pair of cable cutters Right, so we marked where we're going to cut the cable. Just get your cable cutters and snip that off to length. And then when you've done that, make sure that you check the inside of the cable to make sure and open it back up again. Because it could have just crushed the inside there, the piece, the sheath inside. Just open that up. And then get your cable end there your outer for your outer put that on we've already got one up inside on inside there that's already on there just put that in place then you can just drop that in place like so if you want to hold it there temporarily then you can just put a piece of tape around your handlebar just temporary just hold it in place while you're setting everything up 
Right, so we cut the outer to length there. Now what we can do is put the inner cable through. So because we just loosely taped it on there for now to hold it, you can just pull out your cable, your outer. And then if you get your inner cable and then put that through, you may have to look inside just to see. You can see the daylight if you look through the hole here, you see where it's going to go. So you might have to just look in there to get it go through and then you'll see it come out the back like that. So once you've got it to come out the back then you can just put it inside your outer cable so you know it's going to go in there like that, just push it down inside a bit and then put the outer back in to the lever up inside like that so it's in, it's in. Then you can just carry on pushing that through. Until it comes out, see down here. Then what you want to do is push it all the way in and make sure that it's gone up inside the countersunk hole in there. Before you let go, just pull down on this end and let go of the lever so you know it's actually in the right place. Then we can get it mounted up on the caliper end. Right, so on the caliper end, as you've seen before, we got the, when you squeeze the caliper together, the pads are almost touching exactly the same time, so we've got it centralised as best we can for the moment before we start this. Now, if, say, you've got your levers undone like so, then you're thinking you can't push that lever in, it's, it's hard to push. All you've got to do to get that lever to go in is just push the brake together like so and then just push that down. So you want it set down like that in the locked position. And then you can just slacken off your pinch bolt a few turns, just enough so you can get the cable just to go down through the little V in it. Just pass that down through there like that out the bottom like so then we're not going to pinch it up at the minute we're just going to leave it as it is now then what you want to do just make sure before you do the pinch bolt up or anything make sure that if that's wound down to the bottom your barrel adjuster and then what you want to do is just wind it up so undo it effectively a few turns like that then what you want to do is you can pinch your brakes against the rim at the same time just making sure your cable's got enough tension on it just hold it at the same time and then snug up your pinch bolt and just nip it up and then let go of your brakes now you see they're stuck on to the rim there's no gap between them like so so then what you want to do is go to your barrel adjuster again then wind your barrel adjuster back in and then what will happen is the pads will move away from the rim so as your wheel spins now so you've got enough clearance there either side and your brakes are move if you wind your barrel adjuster back up then the gap just closes up and the brakes are on now like so and then if you wind it off again as you can see so you're winding it down the brakes are fully off so you've got a few mil gap there between the pad and the rim surface. So now we've done that, we can set them up, set the pads up so they're contacting the rim right. But we've done the initial setup there, so we know we've got the adjustment there. Easy, we haven't touched that, so we've got all the adjustment left there. So we can get it spot on. Right, 
one, two, three. Right, so the next job is to align your pads. Now you've got the cable in place. And obviously you can see the gap. We haven't touched anything else. We just put the cable in there and then wound the barrel adjuster back in. So you've got enough gap between there and there. That's a three millimeter Allen key, so that doesn't fit in there. So that's about a two mil gap, roughly, two and a half. So what you need to do now is pull your brake and just have a look. Make sure your pads are right where they're touching. You set them up er earlier just so those make making contact with the rim so we could initially set it up. But now you want to pull your lever and have a look and as you can see this one, the back edge is low and the front edge is just touching just below the tyre there, so that's no good. So what you can do is pull your brake on so it's contacting the rim and hold it on. If you just slacken that off a little bit, then just lightly let go of your brake just so you can move the pad. Then you can set the pad how you want it on the rim and then clamp your lever again with your hand so as it's tight so the pad can't move and then just nip up that 4mm. As you nip it up just make sure that the pad's not moving as you nip that up. You only want to nip it up to start with like I said because sometimes you can be doing that up here 4mm and the pad can be rotating as you do it so you just want to nip it up so undo it let go of your brake a little bit so the pad just moves then you can set it where you want it and then hold the brake on and then just nip that up initially just nipping it and then let go of the brake then what you can do to fully tighten it is hold on to the pad to stop it moving and then you can feel if it's moving or not when you do up your brake block you can just feel if that pad's moving at all because sometimes they move so you can do that both sides you can set up both sides so it's contacting the rim you don't want it too near the top you don't want it down right down the bottom you want to try and get it in the middle if you can some people set them higher one side and lower the other to allow for the wear on the brakes so if you want to do that you can so if you want to do that then what you've got to do you can set up the right brake pad lower on the rim and the left brake pad higher on the rim so that's one way of setting them up if you want to do it like that it's up to you so now we've set up and we know that the brake pads are contacting in the right place then what you do is you can look what I'll do is I'll exaggerate it just so you can see what I'm talking about you can see that that the I've just moved it because we haven't obviously fully tightened the mounting bolt yet so I've just pushed it over out of the way but as you can see there as I'm braking the tyre is moving because the wheel's moving side to side so it's being forced over so one pad is touching the rim before the other one so what you want to do like I said before we tighten up the actual mounting nut on there is move the actual caliper by hand I can move it easily by hand left and right as you can see so you want to move it and then try it again and see you want to get it so there's no so they're both contacting at the same point so the tyre so there's no movement in the rim you've got to look at the rim close sometimes to see because when you're braking hard obviously it's forcing the rim one way or the other if they're not centralised so you can centralise it without even touching that at all so when you're happy with that and you can see they're both contacting at the same time then you can go ahead again 
using your spanner on the nut on the square there at the back just to hold it in position stop it moving or you can hold your brake on and at the same time get your hex head and then through the back there you can tighten up your nut at the back like that so as the rims so as it's being contacted square right so once you're happy with the alignment you can go ahead and torque up your mounting nut so that's between uh, six and eight newton meters on that so torque that up then we can go ahead and snip the cable to length now we're happy with the setup right so we can snip the cable to length now and put a stop on it now if you're not happy with the gap between the pads and the rim say your brake lever is traveling a bit too far for your liking it depends how you how you prefer the brakes but what you got to do is wind the barrel adjuster a few turns just to close up the gap between the pad and the rim if you want to so you can just wind it if you wind it in it sets it to how you got it now so like I said about two mil gap but if you wind it up it will close up the gap so as the pads are wearing over time you can just wind your barrel adjuster up so if you're looking at it like that it's going anti-clockwise if you screw it in it's clockwise so you've still got plenty of adjustment to play with in that barrel adjuster it's not maxed out one way or the other you've got all the adjustment to use so you can set it to how it was with about two and a half mil gap roughly or you can turn it anti-clockwise winding it up just to make the brakes closer to the rim depends how you prefer the brakes so what we do is we just snip off the cable and we'll just put a stop on there and crimp that on right so the purpose of the centering screw on the top or hex head as it is in this case is to micro adjust the distance between the pad and the rim braking surface so if you need to make any fine adjustments you can use the centering screw and the centering screw is also handy say if you drop your wheel out of the bike and then you put your wheel back in always make sure you look uh, press the brake and see if it needs centering again because it may well need centering so what you do is you just turn that if you turn it clockwise the right hand pad is getting closer to the rim and the left hand pad is moving away and if you turn it anti-clockwise it's the opposite the left hand pad is getting closer to the rim the right hand pad is for moving further away so you can just make very small adjustments to get it dead center so as they're both touching at exactly the same point and the rims not being pushed left or right Right, so I demonstrated that on the front caliper for you. Now it's the same thing applies to the rear caliper, same um, setup. So all you've got to remember is for the rear brake is make sure that when you're running your outer cable from the shifter to say by your head tube there, um, you've got to remember that when you cut that cable to length, the outer cable, make sure that you steer left and right fully before cutting the outer cable to length. So just bear that in mind for the rear brake. So if you found the video helpful, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content. Till next one, ride safe and I'll see you then.